moving very far, right? Because we have Liz Kopp. One of the great things about Bob Lindsay, as we can all see, is that he was diverse. A great variety. And Liz is going to be sharing with us about the music man. Liz Kopp first came to Israel at the age of 18. The, the, at the age of 18, on a Holy Land tour, just after the Six-Day War of 1967. On that tour, she met her future husband, Chuck Kopp, who encouraged her to return and study Hebrew. <laughs> I wonder if it was just that. She and Chuck soon married and first started attending services at Baptist House in 1970. Soon, Liz began playing piano during the Baptist House worship services, and over four decades later, she continues to lead worship in our keys. She's still 18. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pay you later. <laughs> Besides music, Liz is a comforter of the hurting and a benefactor of the poor. Her generosity is legendary, her hospitality is lavish, and her home is open to all. The Cobb House has been affectionately known throughout the years as a bus station, a place to find direction, help, and community. Many have entered through their doors, empty or hungry. All have left full. Liz Cobb. Sounds like an obituary, but I'll take it. <laughs> Thank you for those kind words. I'll try to live up to them. Um, I'm going to do my talk from the piano because that's where I'm most comfortable. And that's what I loved most about Bob. Um, his love for music, along with all his scholarly adventures and accomplishments and uh, everything else about him. I fell in love with Bob and Margaret from the first time I met them. Their openness, their, they embodied unconditional love and acceptance. It wasn't pretentious, it wasn't overly fawning, it was genuine. And it was for everyone, from the high to the low. Uh, they welcomed everyone, even the craziest among us. It didn't matter. The only people Bob would uh, get a little hesitant with were the ones who had uh, doomsday prophecies for this congregation and uh, or those who came with uh, prophecy charts and opened them up and said this is what's going to happen he called it Christian horoscopy <laughs> he didn't have much tolerance for those but other than that everybody was welcome and the Holy Spirit was present in their lives long before they had their dramatic uh, experiences of their own. The Holy Spirit was there. They just wanted more, and they got more. <laughs> and um, I came onto the scene as, uh, as an 18-year-old, and then, um, but my background was uh, one of very strong legalism, very... Uh, the, very much the dark side of institutionalized Christianity. So I was running away from organized religion. I don't want to have any part with it. And uh, in fact, when I fell in love with Chuck and married him, I had it all planned out. He was going to be the missionary, and I was going to be join a rock band. And that's how it was going to work. <laughs> and our honeymoon, we had a... Uh, I was driving. It was... Uh, we were in going through Greece, getting back down to Israel after we got married in Chicago. And uh, I was going too fast for the tiny roads in the high mountains of Greece, and I drove right off the cliff in the middle of the night. And I screamed, Chuck, we missed the bridge. And uh, he was half asleep beside me and kind of dazedly woke up. Neither one of us remember anything, but we woke up in the bottom of a gutter uh, about 120 feet down only, thank God, it wasn't thousands of feet like I had seen before. And um, there I felt the unconditional love of God, that he loved me and he let me live to work it out. And uh, so we came on to Israel and we were looking for a place to fellowship and met the Lindsays and that was the beginning of that. 
And, uh, but I was working through a lot of that, that baggage that I brought with me, that religion, that, that constraining, that constricting uh, choke on my neck. And, um, and it was uh, a process of deleting all the old that wasn't working for me and absorbing the new, the teaching that I was getting from the church here. So when Bob asked me to come play the piano at church because their, their pianist was going on holiday, this was in the 70s, 1970, I, I think, oh, who can say no to Bob? I'm not sure if I'm quite ready to go back to church yet, but um, so I came in uh, my mini skirts and halter tops, and I thought, if anybody doesn't like the way I'm dressed, I know God loves me, I'm out of here. I'll never darken the door of a church again. Not one person, not one said anything to me, and of course I grew up and outgrew all that, but... Uh, <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> but Bob was one of those guys that just grabbed you by the heart because um, he loved everything from the secular to the sacred, including his music. And uh, if you had a piano in your house and you invited him over, he didn't care who was there. He'd meander over to the piano and he'd, he'd sit down and he'd just play something like... Uh, For those of you who don't know, gonna take a sentimental journey, gonna set my heart at ease, gonna make a sentimental journey to renew old memories. That was Bob. He could croon with the best of them. He could play a mean trumpet, and he sounded to me like a Baptist pastor, white Louis Armstrong. <laughs> and I loved it. His love for life was contagious, and he loved all, and he made room for all. We used to keep a chart on the wall of the tent. I think David Biven made it, a rain chart because it was very important to pray for rain in this country. And uh, when God did send the rain and it started raining a little bit, Bob would come into church with an umbrella open, waltz up to the, up to the pulpit, stand there dancing and sing, I'm singing in the rain, just singing in the rain. What a wonderful feeling, I'm happy again. He would do that over and over and when it rained. Or he'd have us all get up and sing with him. It's beginning to rain, rain, rain. Hear the voice of the Father saying, Whosoever will. Come drink of this water. I'm promised to pour my spirit out on your sons and your daughters. If you're thirsty and dry, look up to the sky. It's beginning to rain. Baptist House was full of parties. My first party here in the living room was Joseph Bivens' baby shower in 1970, and I had just found out that I was pregnant with my first. And uh, there were the Christmas parties, the mayor came, the, the whole place was decorated with Christmas trees and Christmas ornaments and Christmas cookies. Uh, everybody was invited, the whole city was invited, and, and People marched in and out all evening long, and it was just one beautiful place to be. 
One memorable, very memorable party was Valentine's Day. Homer made an, uh, alluded to it in his talk on Saturday when he said that Margaret was woken up in the middle of the night because Bob was excited about something. It happened to be Valentine's Day. And she being very romantic, thinking, <laughs> whatever she was thinking. <laughs> And Bob says to her, Margaret, Luke was first. <laughs> Luke. <laughs> so we had to have a party. <laughs> on Valentine's Day, we had a big cake made. Luke was on the cake. <laughs> Bunch of us got together, wrote songs for it, made everybody sing them. And this is one of them, and you'll, you'll recognize the tune of This Is The Day. But these are the words. This is the way, this is the way that the four should go, that the four should go. This did it say, this is the way, and for sure he'd know, and for sure he'd know. Luke Van Lecter John is the order of the names. The new Lindsay version dethrones old King James. This is the way, this is the way that the four should go. And then we took that lovely chorus. Isn't Luke Wonderful, wonderful, isn't Luke? Luke was third, what a fluke! Just the thought made us puke. Up to first, Luke's been moved. Luke's been moved up to first. Being third was the worst. We're so glad we could burst. Luke is first. And then, of course, you could never, ever be the same if you were, had the privilege of being baptized by Bob in the water that would come up when he prayed for it to come up into that little pool because it wasn't there when you got there. But he would say, just wait around, the Lord will provide. And sure enough, the spring would come into the water, and up the water would come. There'd be enough there for you to be baptized in. But you got in it yourself. Bob did not go in with you. So we had to write about that, too. <laughs> you put your left foot in, you put your right foot in. You dunk yourself completely, you can wash away your sin. While you're in the water, he is driving on the job. You're doing the Lindsay Bob. Put your left foot in, you put your right foot in. You dunk yourself completely, you can wash away your sin. While you're in the water, he is driving on the job. You're doing the Lindsay Bob. Last but not least, Bob knew that I had gone to an all-black high school in Chicago. I don't know what they called us few whites, but we got labeled all-black. And uh, so he would have me play Amazing Grace the way I knew it in the black high school. And uh, if I didn't start it out black gospel enough, he'd say, oh, come on, Liz, Just, you know, start over, start over, get that rhythm right. <laughs> so I want to sing it together with you today, the way Bob would do it if he were here today. Sweet 
Thanks be to God. That was, yes, I, we were just thinking about that one song that even some who have, some of us who have come later didn't hear that uh, we've heard often is Go Tell John. And uh, could we, is that what you were thinking? An encore. Okay. Could we also have this? This is one of, well, you know better than I do, this is one of Lindsay's Bob, songs, yes, Bob's songs, right. um, that encapsulates much of what... Uh, he saw take place, I mean, in a study in the Synoptic Gospels, right? And then in reality of people being healed and things being shook up and changed and the Spirit of God was present. Yeah. So. All right. You got to stand up for this one. <laughs> Go tell John what you hear and see. Go tell John what you hear and see. Go tell John what you hear and see. Go tell John what you see. The blind receive their sight and the lame are walking. The blind receive their sight and the lame are walking. Blind receive their sight and the lame are walking. Go tell John what you see. Go tell John what you hear and see. Go tell John what you hear and see. Go tell John what you hear and see. Go tell John what you see. The left and deaf and the deaf are hearing. Gains are cleansed and the deaf are hearing. Lepers are cleansed and the deaf are hearing. Go tell John what you see. Go tell John what you hear and see. Go tell John what you hear and see. Go tell John what you hear and see. Go tell John what you see. Up and the poor hear the gospel. Dead are raised up, and the poor hear the gospel. The dead are raised up, and the poor hear the gospel. Go tell John what you see. Tell John what you hear and see. Go tell John what you hear and see. Go tell John what you see. 
Blessed is he not offended in me. Blessed is he not offended in me. Blessed is he not offended in me. Go tell John what you see. Tell John what you hear and see. Go tell John what you hear and see. Go tell John what you hear and see. Go tell John what you see. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. That was powerful. And it's uh, so great to have this important angle on Lindsay's life uh, through Liz Kopp, who has definitely enfleshed this and still living it out until today. Liz shared that uh, Bob loved all and made room for all. And uh, this, this uh, section here, this experiential section of the conference, right, is, um, is important to, uh, to remember that Lindsay was full, diverse, and he wasn't just academic, he wasn't just this, wasn't just that, and that we can also take home and not just in our head, but in our heart, that uh, what Liz has shared, that he loved all and made room for all. Amen. We're now going to have a break. Uh, oh, is there, sorry, okay. Okay, I'm sorry. We have, a f we have some time left. And uh, may there's questions and comments about this. Yep, sorry. There's a microphone. In the 80s, I pastored in Fort Worth, and we had Bob come and share with us. And, of course, we had a piano in the church, so therefore, after the end of the service, he was over there doing this stuff. And especially Amazing Grace. And he left, and people in my congregation went, Oh, when can we get Dr. Lindsay to come back and sing some more of those wonderful Israeli songs? <laughs> and there's a story about singing in the rain and Gene Kelly. Do you know about that? You need to share that. Do you know what it is? Somebody uh, got word of Gene Kelly, who made Singing in the Rain famous, about this thing. And he got, I don't forget the whole story, but Gene sent Bob an autographed picture of himself uh, for Singing in the Rain. And Liz, I want to give you the same freedom I give Barbara. You don't ever have to grow up. <laughs> <laughs> It was a woman that was in the congregation that it came from Hollywood. It worked in the, in the movie industry, and she'd heard it. And uh, I, I wanted to tell a, a quick story. A, years ago, when I was living in, uh, we just left Lebanon and moved to Pasadena to go to school. And I had, uh, in 75, 76, I was part of the Ukrainian quartet. And, and we toured Canada, all the Slavic communities of Canada, and, and also in North America. Well, when I moved many years later to Pasadena, so I'd be about a decade later, I, I, I kept in touch with the Ukrainian and uh, Russian uh, church. So when I moved to Pasadena, I let the Ukrainians know uh, that I was in town. And uh, so one day they contacted me and said, we want to do an outreach to the Jewish um, uh, Russian Jews that have immigrated to the States, and they'd settle in West Hollywood. West Hollywood of all places. Those of you from LA know how odd that is. And uh, they didn't have anything to do. They didn't speak English. They would just spend all day in the park playing chess. So the, uh, the Russian Baptists, and Russian Baptists are really Pentecostal, anyway, the Russian Baptists and the Ukrainians decided to do an outreach. So they contacted me, said, well, Homer, Homerenko, they called me. They said, Homerenko, we want you to uh, uh, preach uh, a, a, a sermon in Hebrew, and then we're going to bring all the Slavic delicacies, uh, perohe in Ukrainian, Russian pierogi, all of the, everything, all the food, and uh, we're going to set up in the park, and I said, okay. So um, the day of the outreach, I drove down from Pasadena, we all rendezvoused in West uh, Hollywood, 
And we had this beautiful Russian and Ukrainian choirs and music, just amazing time of, of worship. And the Jewish, Russian Jews were overwhelmed. I mean, they, they loved it. Uh, and then it was my time to get up on the stage. So I preached uh, uh, in Hebrew. And afterwards, we had this uh, lovely, lovely meal, just tons of delicious Slavic uh, food. And a guy comes up to me, and he says, uh, eh, eh, Shalom, eh, I'm Israel, and I wanted to ask you if you know Lindsay. <laughs> so this Russian walked up to me, and he said, Hello, uh, I'm from Israel. And I'm wondering, do you know Lindsay? And I said, Vadai, uh, miata. And he said, Shmi Trofim. I said, yes, of course I know him. Who are you? He said, Trofim. So I said, Slava Bobrat. He said, Slava Noviki Brot. And I said, uh, how do you know him? Well, this guy had walked, fled Bolshevik Russia, and had walked from Russia all the way to British Mandatory Palestine. And uh, he lived in a community where later, many years later, became the Baptist village. And Bob talks about visiting the Baptists. Remember the, the Russian Baptists that live right across the, the road from Baptist village. Anishko. What's that? Anishko. Yeah, Anishko, for example, who wasn't Ukrainian. He was actually Russian Baptist, but Trofim is Ukrainian. And uh, I said, yeah, I do. Of course I know him. I said, well, next time you see him, would you, would you please uh, greet him for me? So next time I was in Jerusalem, I said, Uncle Bob, you're not going to believe this. We're doing outreach to the Russian Jews in West Hollywood. And after the service, a guy comes up to me and asks me in Hebrew uh, if I knew Lindsay. And he said, yeah, what was his name? I said, Trofim. He said, Trofim, oh, how is he? And he, he, he remembered him knew him and was thrilled to receive greetings from this Ukrainian Pentecostal who was part of the Russian Baptist community across from Baptist uh, Village all those many decades ago. It says in the Bible to be fruitful and multiply. <laughs> so we in the past have learned from some of these uh, people, these scholars that are here, the other people have been studying. And uh, the Lord put on me uh, one word in the Bible uh, when I came to the coverings for the wilderness tabernacle, there was a uh, dugong, D-U-G-O-N-G, in the King James Bible. And so I, I don't know, I always wondered what on earth is a dugong? So we uh, have lived in Illinois, but uh, we winter in Florida, down near Sarasota, and the uh, scientist there was uh, with the Moat Marine, she said the dugong was the manatee. And uh, I had uh, know that there were manatees around there. You go to Apollo Beach, and you can see a lot of them. And even when Jerry and I got married, we uh, did our honeymoon in Christian retreat there in Manatee County on Upper Manatee Road with the Upper Manatee River. And these manatees come by there. And one time they were, shall we say, multiplying. So <laughs> they were uh, very active. But the point is that uh, I want to uh, show you, in case you have some children, to help them to uh, bring the Bible up to date. You know, uh, any fact that we can prove uh, is a real fact, not fiction. You know, some people say, oh, it's just a, just a story. But um, I have this picture on the T-shirt of the manatee, in case you've never heard of it, and this is something we can teach children and teach them that the Bible is true. And so uh, I feel like I'm a part of the fruit out of this uh, legacy here, and I know that you are too, and that we have our, uh, each of us, as we bring out different facts and things uh, that we can all learn. Sea cows, yes. And so there, there's a great variety of animals that are found in the Bible 
There's an amazing new, thank you, thank you. There's a, there's a new uh, biblical zoo that's highly worth uh, visiting in Beit Shemesh, if you have the chance, called it Natural History. But, yes. We were to limit our children to number four. And so number five and number six was on your own cheshbon. <laughs> Being fruitful and multiply. Yes, the cops have a number of children that are over four on their own and, and on yours, on your own account. So do we have any other uh, questions or comments about Liz uh, and the music man and uh, Debbie, your father? Just a comment about Liz. Is, is this My, about fruitful and multiply as well? Um, oh. It could, no, it's not. Um, when I was, uh, of course, you know, I was a budding teenager when Liz came to play the piano at the church. And my dad did not let me wear mini skirts. He used to tell my mom, uh, don't you think that's a little short? And mom says, but that's a style. And uh, I said, but Liz gets to wear whatever she wants. And then my dad said, leave Liz alone. <laughs> that was his comment. There was a lot of wisdom and grace there that's manifested in his words, in his actions, in, in her life, in our life, in our community's life. Narkees, um excels at uh, making... Theology, not a barrier, but a center. Um, practice, also not a, not, a, not a fence, but something that would gravitate you to the center and to open to all. And uh, Liz and, and Chuck uh, exemplify that. I just want to add something on a slightly, maybe serious note, but it's not just Liz, it's not just Chuck. I've only been here for two years, two and a half years, and I feel as much part of this congregation as any one of you. I have never met any of you before. I knew about the Lindsays. I heard about Bob Lindsay when I first made Aliyah and a bit before, 20, nearly 30 years ago. And I was a bit scared about everything I heard, <laughs> mostly the whole um, academic side, because I'm basically not academic. Um, and I just want to say that everything that Chuck says about what this community is, everything that Liz has implied, everything that Gary has said, and I think Gary needs thanks beyond any of us have ever really expressed this week about what he's done putting this whole affair together. I love, I love, I love you all, and I'm here to stay. <laughs> Thanks be to God. Brad. Brad, uh, Brad Young. I'll just say I did get to play trumpet once with Bob Lindsay. I was in the chapel once, so I hope I can continue on that. But again, I said I worship with people all over the city, but there's nobody that makes my trumpet speak like this cop. <laughs> now I'm as tall as uh, <laughs> Brian in here and Gary up here. You know, boy, they've done such a great job. I was trying to be. Quiet is just so joy, such a joy listening to everybody's things. I was thinking about uh, Dr. Lindsay on Sunday nights. You know, he, after he received the infilling of the Holy Spirit, he felt like the Lord told him to have a Sunday night prayer meeting, uh, and they would pray for people. And at that time, he would sing all of these songs. And I, I've got to admit, that's where I learned Hine Ani Adonai from Psalm three, behold, I am the Lord, and he would sing the angel of the Lord and camps around about them, or uh, from uh, Jer Jeremiah 31, Hine Yamin Baim, that was a really fast-paced song, uh, but he would lay a carpet out and then, you know, pray for people, and it was really a time of intense praise, and it wasn't like a really big meeting, not like the Sunday morning thing. I was thinking, too, yesterday I was bragging about, or talking about how I got to teach the Hebrew Bible study. I thought, well, you know, we seldom have ever had a minyan, you know, it's kind of a small 
group, I think we really ought to be talking to Ray Pritz if he's here, because he like, he had the English one, there's like a hundred people there every time, I mean, that's where the, the real action was, but I saw on that, on that Sunday night meeting, so many miracles of prayer and personal ministry, and he would, uh, Dr. Lindsay and Margaret, they would spend time talking with each other, but uh, Bill Bean, Dr. Bean, very good friend of David Bivin and us, but I remember what he told me when he was able to be here when Dr. Lindsay came back after this church had been built and they were showing him everything and he was so excited to see it. And then, then he says, well, what about that carpet? You know, uh, I love these stained glass windows, but you know, he seemed to be more, he was just so concerned about a prayer time. You know, we, we still, we don't ever want to lose that carpet in that new church building. And I think what we really see is with Chuck and the leadership, uh, the BCI, so many, me door to door, we say in Hebrew, you know, this next generation with Brian and Gary, so many, Lord is continuing to move. And that carpet, I don't, I don't know, it's here someplace. <laughs> Thank you. So Hebrew songs that uh, in this new expansion of ministry that... Uh, Bob was a part of and continuing to, to sing Hebrew and here at Narkis we've sung many Hebrew songs and some Arabic songs as well and so that's, that's been great.